trying to fashion the fatted calf here. Hey, this was one nasty day, right? Although not, not, not nearly bad enough to repeal last week's phenomenal gains. But you know what? Today was actually a pretty good day if you owned some gold, which was really up nicely. By the way, took out the high. That's why I'm always telling you to keep some of the precious metal in your portfolio as diversification insurance against precisely this kind of reversal. As gold goes up in response to economic chaos, we got enough of that to go around, right? Frequent viewers know that I favor the GLD. That's that ETF that owns gold. So you don't have to, uh, you know, own physical gold. But I like gold coins. I like gold bullion if you have a lot of money and can pay to store the stuff, which you have to, as well as the best of the gold miners. And you know I feel two are the best. Agnico Eagle, AEM, Sean Boyd on the show a lot, and El Dorado Gold. We have the CEO there, too. And I am particularly interested in the fact that now EGO this afternoon dropped its bid for Andean and seeded the overpay in a red-hot gold takeover market to Gold Corp. GG. I am not backing away from my pro-gold view. However, this is a little change. According to the charts, as interpreted by Dan Fitzpatrick, who is a terrific technician, my colleague at the street.com where I'm chairman, do you know that there's another precious metal that is poised to do even better? And this is one that I almost never talk about. My bad. So maybe you want to stop worshiping at the altar of the gold stuff, a la Edward G. Robinson in his best work in the Ten Commandments, and instead think about buying some silver. That's right. We're taking a page from the William Jennings Bryan bimetallism playbook. Even though everybody's always talking about gold, do you know that silver has actually outperformed? I didn't know this until I did this piece. It's up 17.4% so far this year. That's compared to 13.5% gain for gold. And based on Fitzpatrick's readings of the charts, silver should continue to deliver larger profits. You know, look, sometimes you get stuck. I mean, I really like gold, but I don't want anyone to think I'm taking away from gold here. But, you know, I, I looked at these weekly charts. Take a look at this. It's a weekly chart of the SLV, okay? The SLV happens to be an ETF that's like the GLD, but this time for silver. Look at this. For nearly a year, silver's been trending sideways, okay? With resistance at 19, or to translate from Wall Street gibberish in English, silver's been banging and banging against that $19 ceiling. And last week, hey, last week it finally broke through. How about that? That's a very bullish technical sign. Fitzpatrick also likes the fact that there's been consistent support. Remember, that's the floor, okay? At the 40-week moving average. Again, you know, look at this. When you get this kind of floor, you really feel emboldened every time it comes down. And people have been doing that. They've come in and accumulated the SLV on weakness. That, again, is another huge plus. But... The big positive for silver has to do with a concept called volatility. See these lines in this chart? They're called Bollinger Bands, and they measure volatility by calculating what's known as the standard deviation from a stock or an ETS moving average, and containing about 90% of all the price changes. When there's a lot of volatility, these bands are wide. When the price is pretty flat, they're narrow. Right now, the Bollinger Bands for the SLV are incredibly tight. Incredible. I mean, i got to tell you, I've, this is just shrinking, 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 versus the way it was, right? Um, the volatility in silver is, frankly, at record lows. Rather amazing that it could be so high and the volatility so low. This is an important, super important to a technician like Fitzpatrick, because there's a cycle to volatility, one that can help predict big movements in a stock or a commodity. High volatility ultimately leads to low volatility as buyers and sellers balance each other's out. Once something happens to upset that balance, though, like the recent run-up in the price of silver, the volatility will explode. It will increase dramatically. So when these Bollinger brands are very narrow, like they are right now, in the SOV, Fitzpatrick calls it a volatility squeeze. It means the spring is coiled and the volatility is ready to pop, which is exactly what we're starting to see in this chart. And that can often fuel a massive breakout. An increase in volatility by itself isn't good or bad. But given that SLV just broke through the ceiling that it's been banging on for a year, Fitzpatrick believes that's a tell. It's a tell that the volatility surge will lead to a huge rally, not a decline. How huge? All right. Fitzpatrick believes the SLV could have a $5 move higher. Man, look at that. That's actually, it's like going to be up here. Not bad, huh? 
to $24 over the next year before it runs out of steam. Based on the fact that the SLV's last big rally from its, mid -low, from its low in the mid-14s in February to its high in the mid-19s in May gave you a five-point gain. Again, that's how technicians think. They think you get five here, you're going to get five here. Hey, look, they've been right. Let's compare that now. This is a very instructive because you know how much I like GLD and I never talk about SLV. Let's compare it to the chart of gold. Now, Fitzpatrick doesn't dislike this picture, okay? In fact, he thinks it paints a very bullish picture, but not as bullish as silver. It's a little like comparing a Matisse with a Picasso, if you were off the uh, Guernica thing. The GLD has a nice, well-defined uptrend with higher lows over the past year. Again, you know, we like that higher low thing, right? We like that higher low thing. The chart tells us what we already know, that the demand for this stuff has been voracious. Now, ever since gold peaked in June, it's been consolidating, although it's still well above the 40-week moving average, which is active as a floor, and the trampoline for the GLD. See, you know, whatever goes down there, it bounces uh, whenever it's pulled back. That's very similar to what we saw with silver, but there's a big difference. The difference is that gold doesn't have the same kind of volatility squeeze setup. The volatility for gold, as measured by these Bollinger Bands that he talks about, isn't high, like it was back in the fourth quarter of 2009, when those bands were far apart. But it's not particularly low either. It's neither here nor there. Fitzpatrick still likes gold. He'd buy the GLD on a pullback to its 40-week moving average. But, you know, so it's got to come back down. I got to tell you. I don't think it's going to. But, you know, he says it's got to come down, back down to this line. So you can see that there'll be, uh, you know, a decline that you certainly don't want to be involved in. Uh, it's not poised for the same kind of major move higher that the charts say is for silver. Now, what's my verdict? How do I feel about all this? Because you know I am a huge believer in gold. Based on the fundamentals, I would agree. I agree with the charts. I'm thinking now taking silver over gold but not until the end of this month. I have repeatedly told you that September is the single best month for gold out of all 12. It has rallied an average of 8% in September for the last 17 years. Of course, we don't just blindly follow anything, including the counter. Gold rallies in September because this is when demand heats up thanks to the Chinese and Indian wedding season. Once we reach October, though, you got my approval if you want to swap out of gold and into silver in order to catch that long-term rally, that five bucks that Fitz thinks is in the cards. Many of the reasons that we like gold apply to silver as well. It benefits from rising middle class, from jewelry demand. It's not really replaceable. Gold and silver are pretty much your only choices. If you're buying something like a ring or necklace or a bracelet, and you don't want to get slapped in the face, it's got real scarcity value. The one big difference is that silver is more heavily used in industrial applications, mostly for making electronics. Here's an interesting statistic. About 49% of all silver we produce is used industrially. Only 9% of gold. So, when the economy's soft, you don't want to touch silver. But when economic activity is recovering around the world, that's a hugely significant source of additional demand for silver. That sets us apart from the precious metal competition. Remember, silver gets used everywhere, so don't get hung up on how bad the American economy is. This is more of a play on emerging growth markets. Here's the bottom line. I am not one bit backing away from the golden cow. I love the calf. You need to own some gold. Don't make that the takeaway here. And something you saw today is gold rallied while the market knows that. But the charts indicate that silver could be a better bet going forward, and I'm inclined to agree. But only after September, historically the best month of the year for gold. You've got to wait till that month's over. Gold's still good. Silver could be better, or at least in, starting in October. One other word, I do not want you to buy any silver mining stocks, as many are constant in source of equity. The SLV will do just fine, and it is by far the best way to play this precious and industrial metal. Greg in New Jersey. Greg. Booyah, Kramer. Booyah, Greg. The thing I'm talking about is uh, they're in the rare earth business, and thanks to the Chinese cutting export quotas by half recently, rare earth prices.